Hi guys, it's Nabila. Today I'm going to do an overview of the short letters in Spencerian, those without ascenders and descenders. This is the first of longer videos in a series I'll be doing on the basic letter forms in Spencerian. Towards the end of this episode, we'll also look at how to join the short letters together and produce words. The short letters we're going to look at today are composed of a straight line, a right curve, and a left curve. The straight line should be at 52 degrees from the horizontal. This is usual for Spencerian, so make sure your guidelines are if you're using them. Now let's take a look at how each of the short letters are composed of these three strokes. The I, for example, is composed of a left curve followed by a straight line followed by another left curve. I've also added a dot for the I, and that's in the middle of my ascender height. Notice that we join the straight line to the left curve at the end with a small underturn. The U is formed by a right curve followed by a straight line followed by another right curve followed by a straight line followed by another right curve. So you see adding up very simple shapes leads to a much more complex shape. And we'll see this pattern in the rest of the lowercase letters. For the W we begin it in much the same way as the U except the last turn is slightly narrower and ends with a small tail. Notice that the N is just a U upside down. When you're making the M, make sure the two parts of it look the same. Each of the humps is composed of the same strokes, so they should look the same. The V ends with a tail, just like the W. Notice that for the X, it's just a right curve followed by a straight line followed by a left curve. Then we have another stroke that we draw on top of what we've drawn that's at a slightly lower angle to the horizontal. Letter O sports a cute little oval shape we haven't seen before. Remember to keep this quite narrow. Finish with a small tail. The letter A can be a bit tricky because it's a oval that's nestled in a left curve. My trick for the letter E is to make the right curve a little lower than I would normally. This way I get a nice little loop after I make the straight line for the E. This is the traditional C that's featured in most of the older Spencerian books. If you don't like it, and some people don't, there's also a modern variant which is just simple and like this. For the R, you want to extend the initial stroke a little above the X height line. That way the R won't look squashed. For the S, we execute a right curve, followed by another shape we haven't seen before, and it's nice to have a little dot at the end where it connects to the right curve. So those are all of the short letters, so now we're going to look at connecting them together. So let's look at the simplest case. With this N, the exit stroke is a right curve, and the entrance stroke of the U is also a right curve, so to connect them together is pretty simple. How about if we have a different entry and exit stroke? So in this case of this I, for example, we have a right curve as the exit stroke, but the V has a left curve as the entrance stroke. In this case, we use a compound curve, as something that's kind of transitions between the right curve and the left curve. So if you imagine um, like an oval, the reason that we call them right curves and left curves is because they make um, the right curve makes the kind of right part of the oval and the left curve makes the left part of the oval. And uh, a compound curve transitions between the two. In the case of our letters with tails, um, it's quite simple to connect the letters. Just extend the tail to the top or wherever it needs to go. Now let's practice connecting the letters together by writing out some words. I like to find words with the letters that I'm looking for, like in this case I only want to be writing letters that don't have ascenders or descenders, by sticking them into an online boggle solver. I've included a link down below to the one I used with the letters preset, so there's a lot more words with just these letters that you can practice. Make sure you're checking the spacing between your letters. This is what gives Spencerian a lovely fluid look when the letters are evenly spaced. So in an upcoming video, I'll continue with the other lowercase Spencerian letters. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like this sort of content, please give me a thumb so I know. And if you're interested in calligraphy and penmanship, please hit the subscribe button.